Who are you? How come you're, how come you're in here? Hello Survivors and welcome to Survivor's Guild, the only channel that determines your odds of surviving 2011's Grave Encounters, so stay tuned till the end for your survival stats. I'm your sharp dressed slasher turned horror host Ghostfake, and today we are taking a look at 2011's found footage phantom fest Grave Encounters. But first, go ahead and keep a camera on that like button, and hit that subscribe button with the evidence you just captured. And go ahead and hit that share button to let everyone know not to go to the Collingwood Psychiatric Hospital. And feel free to check out Patreon patreon.com slash survivors guild for some exclusive content stickers and a chance to win your own ghost fake mask so check out patreon.com slash survivors guild for more information now i hope you like hunting for evidence of ghosts and actually finding evidence of ghosts because this movie is getting spoiled grave encounters written and directed by the vicious brothers Stuart ortiz and colin minahan starring sean rogerson ashley grisgo merwin mondeser juan redinger and ben wilkinson grave encounters is about a ghost hunting reality TV show crew that arrive at a psychiatric hospital and discover that the ghosts are hunting them. We open up to Jerry Hartfield, March 20th, 2010, who tells us that he received a tape in the mail that was a pilot for a show called Grave Encounters. We see the trailer for the show, which introduces us to Lance, Sasha, and Matt. It's time to have some Grave Encounters. Before we cut back to Jerry, who tells us everything was going smoothly until episode 6, before warning us that what we're about to see is not a movie, which is another way of saying found footage. We cut to the opening sequence of Grave Encounters episode 6, The Haunted Asylum, where the crew is setting up the intro shot where Lance Preston introduces the Collingwood Psychiatric Hospital, where they will be staying the night. The hospital closed in 1963 and has been the subject of much paranormal activity, which the Grave Encounters crew will attempt to document. Lance interviews Morgan Turner, a town historian who explains the history behind the hospital and the story of the Harvard-trained neurologist Arthur Friedkin, who performed experimental brain surgeries on the patients before six patients broke out of their rooms and stabbed Arthur Friedkin to death, landing him in the meat bank at deposit number one. Oh, oh death awaits. We then get introduced to the resident caretaker, Kenny Sandoval. So should I talk to you or to the camera? Yeah, don't, this isn't. Who shows them around the building and tells them about certain paranormal hotspots that are notorious for activity, showing the room where a patient wrote all over the walls and rooms where a patient self-deposited herself in a bathtub into the meat bank at deposit number two, and eventually showing them the service tunnels under the buildings that connect all of them. They grab a couple more interviews, including Javier Ortega, a groundskeeper on the property whom they pay to pad their show's runtime. It was a really scary. A ghost on the exterior of the building. Unbelievable. We then get introduced to Houston Gray, a medium slash actor, heavy on the actor. I mean, we do not want to be messing with something like this. At all. And shortly before they begin, we get introduced to T.C. Gibson, who has been filming this entire time. Cut to that evening when we see Matt setting up cameras all around the areas of the building with notable activity. Yeah! <laughs> before Kenny locks them in, telling him that he'll see them at 6 in the morning. It's time to have some grave encounters. They begin their investigation, wandering the halls, taking readings, and trying to get EVPs, capturing the essence of a paranormal reality TV show. The crew take a short break, during which the window hotspot upstairs does its thing and opens. Lance tasks TC with catching some B-roll as they plan on wrapping up the evening soon. TC gets a call from his wife, wherein he finds out that his daughter is scared of monsters and he needs to calm her down. But when he sets his camera on the floor to talk to his daughter, the wheelchair moves in the background. He calms his daughter down and continues his quest for b-roll but when he heads into a room and complains about how cold it is the door shuts behind him scaring the hell out of him what the f was that he brings the crew to the room and shows them the footage that he caught which they are more excited about than he they provoke the spirit to do it again and when nothing happens lance gets frustrated but then they hear a crash in another room and go to investigate they find an overturned gurney with its wheels spinning before hearing footfalls on the floor above them they head upstairs to investigate and sasha attempts to get an evp but while they listen for a response something pulls on sasha's hair sending her into a panic they regroup and lance sends houston to take sasha back to the hq before returning upstairs to try to catch more activity. Lance again gets frustrated when the ghosts won't respond to his commands, so he decides to take some final still shots before they pack up, unaware of what he's capturing in these pictures. The trio return to HQ, having got lost for a bit, dealing with the interference on the walkie-talkies, and send Matt to go collect the cameras. While retrieving the cameras, Matt discovers the open window upstairs and tries to tell the crew about it over the walkie-talkie, but they can't hear him. He hears a loud crash and walkies off the camera to investigate it. The crew get sick of waiting for Matt, 
Matt and decide to go looking for him. They don't find Matt, but they do find a lot of his equipment strewn all over the hallway. Lance and Sasha split from TC, but as TC searches, he gets pushed down a staircase and Lance and Sasha return to help him up. They return to HQ, eager to be let out of the building, but Kenny hasn't shown up yet, and it's after 6. TC wheels in a gurney and they try to break through the doors and enlist the help of Lance to do so. They crash through the doors only to find that they no longer lead to the front entrance. It now leads to another hallway, in spite of being the same death awaits doors they came in through. They search around and find an exit sign and go through those doors, only to find more hallways. What? What is that? The crew look for another way out before double checking the time and noticing that it's still night outside. It should have been bright by 7.45. It's still night out. The crew try to figure out how all of their clocks could be off before heading back to HQ for some rest. While everyone sleeps, Lance records a video letting us know that his cell phone now says that it's 1pm and that he can't make sense of anything that's going on. He says he's going to take a nap and cuts the camera. At around 8pm, while the crew sleeps, an unseen force tips their lights over, smashing them on the floor and waking up the whole group, leaving the only lights they have being their flashlights and camera lights. They also discover that all of their food is rotted, but luckily they still have bottled water. TC recalls a fire escape that he saw on the outside, and the group decides to head to the roof to find a way out. They eventually find a stairwell with rooftop access, but when they ascend the stairs, they are met with a wall. It's f solid. They double back and find a map of the building on the wall, but can't make sense of it when the map says that they are on the first floor in spite of the fact that they ascended the steps to the fourth floor. They can then hear Matt screaming and they run in that direction to find him, but are led to a room where instead of a map, they find a haunted bed frame. <laughs> and they quickly leave. Cut to the group huddled together in a room where they feel safe enough to rest again. But when they wake up, they find that Sasha has the word hello scratched into her back. Hmm, seems friendly enough. It appears as though it's trying to communicate, but can't decide if it wants to say hello or get out. So I said both. Shortly after, they hear Matt on the walkie-talkies and decide that he must be close, so they go searching again for him. But while searching for him, a figure runs behind TC and the group go after it, believing it to be Matt. But instead, they find this girl, who we are going to assume is an ex-patient, assuming this girl into the meat bank at deposit number three, who then jump scares the crew with her O face. How come you're in here? sending the group into a panic run in the opposite direction. Lance, Sasha, and TC hide in a room that they find at the end of the hallway. But unfortunately, Houston has a problem when he gets separated from the group in all the chaos. Luckily for us, he wanders into a hallway with a camera, which also shows us that they've been in the hospital for 46 hours. But as Houston wanders the hallway, he gets lifted into the air by an unseen force before he's then dropped and then launched into the meat bank at deposit number four. <sighs> Cut back to the trio who have taken another nap only for them to wake up with hospital bands on their wrists. They wander the halls, getting all jump scared by scary arms grabbing them occasionally, before they finally find Matt, complete with hospital gown and mumbling about how good of a patient he is. They bring Matt into a different room and begin asking him questions. Where have you been? Where did this gown come from? Do you know how to get out of here? You know, the usual. And he responds that they'll all be able to get out once they're all better. They all take another nap and they all wake up when scary arms start reaching through the walls and ceiling. They run out of the room and into the room with all the bathtubs, only to find out that one is not as empty as when they came in the building. When they go to leave, Matt won't leave the tub, so TC goes to get him. But when TC gets too close to the tub, a mysterious figure bursts from the bloodbath and pulls TC into the meat bank at deposit number five. I don't They flip the tub only to find it empty of the figure and of the TC. The remaining trio continue searching for a way into the service tunnels and stumble their way to an elevator. Lance tries to pry it open, but when his attempts fail, he doubles back to find something to pry it open with. He finds a hospital bed and harvests some metal from it before noticing something on the ground. He goes to investigate and finds a tongue laying on the ground. 10 second rule, before drops of blood land next to it, and Lance discovers the owner of the tongue on the ceiling. Oh and deposit number six in the meat bank. <laughs> and he quickly runs away and back to the crew. He pries open the elevator doors, but before they can go down the ladder, they hear something approaching and Lance goes to defend them. There it is. He gets attacked by the tongueless guy and Sasha runs over to help him. Lance gets away and he and Sasha hold the door closed while Matt records them before turning the camera on himself and then turning on himself when he intentionally falls down the elevator shaft and into the meat bank at deposit number seven. 
Sasha and Lance eventually make their way down the shaft and into the service tunnels, but when the tunnels prove to be as inescapable as the hospital, Lance gets frustrated and loses hope before Sasha loses her lunch. Oh, she had blood for lunch. And the two of them sit down and rest. While Sasha sleeps, Lance talks to the camera, confessing that he's tired, hungry, and his feet hurt, and he doesn't remember what day it is, and that he doesn't think that Sasha is going to make it. And later, while they sleep in the view of one of the cameras, a fog appears in the tunnel, and when the fog dissipates, Sasha is gone. Undoubtedly, she's in the meat bank at deposit number eight, leaving Lance all alone. Lance begins to go crazy, understandably so, and at one point goes to sleep, and when he wakes up, there's a door by him. He goes into it and finds a secret operatory along with pictures of Dr. Friedkin's previous patients before he stumbles upon an altar with this skull that must have belonged to deposit number nine into the meat bank. When he turns around, he finds Dr. Friedkin performing a lobotomy. We here count his nurses as deposits 10 and 11 and the patient at deposit number 12 before Lance gets jump scared by Dr. Friedkin and the camera cuts away. When the camera turns back on, Lance says that they said that he's all better and can finally go home, having received an assumed lobotomy as treatment and the movie ends. So now, to find out, what are your chances of suffering survivor's guilt? This is where we take a look at our main characters and the death that surrounds them to determine your odds of surviving this movie. And a huge thanks to return guest, Local Legends with Burton Moran, for delivering today's stats. We start off our meat bank deposits with Dr. Friedkin, who went on to a very successful post-mortem career after his patient stabbed him right into the meat bank at deposit number one followed by the rumored bathtub body, who turned out to be true as deposit number two into the meat bank. We then count the scary girl of our nightmares as number three. Houston has a problem as deposit number four. TC gets pulled into the bloodbath and into the meat bank at deposit number five. This tongueless dude gives us a tongueless scare as deposit number six. Matt takes the elevator the hard way as deposit number seven. Sasha disappears into the mist as deposit number eight. This skull settles its way into the meat bank at deposit number 9. And we wrap up our meat bank deposits with Dr. Freakin's nurses and patient, dying to get into the meat bank at deposits 10 through 12. Now, let's take a look at our survivors. We have Lance and Jerry Hartfield, which means that out of 14 characters, only 2 survived, giving you a 14.28% chance of surviving this movie. Given those odds, when is the next time you're going to go ghost hunting? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you, Burton, for delivering today's stats. Survivors, be sure to go check out Burton's channel linked below, especially if you enjoy paranormal investigation. Check out local legends Burton Moran for some great paranormal content. And if this is your first time on my channel, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And a huge shout out to my patrons. Chris D, Sackhead Ed, Bubba T, Maximilian H, Macabre Python 18, Video Creep, Papiulio, Valentina P, James H, Mintrix, Brady D, Matthew, Vids for You, Mr. Nightmare Fuel, Maxwell the Kaiju Man, Lobotomite, and Whiskey. Thank you all so much for your support. It truly means the world to us. And I will officially start sending out those masks in January. I seriously appreciate your support. And as always, guys, thanks and don't die.